The following tutorial will provide you with detailed instructions on how to get your Sega Dreamcast back online. Getting your Sega Dreamcast back online is a relatively simple process, but requires the following equipment, hardware, and tools to do so. In this section, I will outline in detail everything required in order to access the internet over your home broadband connection via your Dreamcast. 1. Sega Dreamcast. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will be using the 3020 NTSC model. 1. Sega Dreamcast controller including VMU unit. 1. Ethernet cable. 1. Raspberry Pi compatible USB power supply. 1. Raspberry Pi 2 B model. Cases are optional and vary in size and quality, but they are highly suggested for the purposes of this project. A microSD card and microSD to SD converter. Make sure to use a microSD card compatible with the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. A 0.47 microfarad capacitor. A 390 ohm resistor. One 9 volt battery wired connection case. A 9 volt battery. Be aware that line voltage may change depending on the region that you are calling from. A USB 56K fax modem. A standard phone connection line. Any size is appropriate as we'll be cutting it to our needs for the purposes of this project. Two blank CDRs. A utility knife. Standard wire strippers. Standard wire cutters. Electrical solder. Solder flux paste. Electrical tape. A soldering iron. Once you have all of the hardware and tools, we can begin the project. Take your phone line. Cut 8 to 12 inches on both ends. Using your utility knife, cut approximately 2 inches from the outer shielding on your phone line. Using your wire cutters, carefully remove the excess shielding from your phone line. Repeat these steps for the second piece of phone line. Once you have removed the outer shielding, you will see four small wires inside. The colors should be red, yellow, green, and black. Carefully remove approximately an eighth of an inch of shielding on the yellow, green, and black wires. Repeat these steps for the second piece of phone line. Remove approximately one inch of shielding from both of the red wires. Now that the shielding has been removed, we can solder the wires back together. Carefully solder the yellow, green, and black ends of the phone line back together. Add a bit of solder paste to increase the bond. Perform this step on the yellow, green, and black wire. Do not solder the red wire. Both the yellow, green, and black wire should be securely reconnected. Using the electrical tape, individually cover the exposed ends of the yellow, green, and black wires. Cut a slightly larger piece of electrical tape and group the yellow, green, and black wires together. Clip back approximately a quarter inch of the exposed copper wire on either end of the red wire. Now take the capacitor and clip back approximately a quarter inch of wire on either side. 
Add a small amount of solder paste to the end of the capacitor. For this project, polarity is not an issue. Solder one end of the capacitor to one end of the red wire. Slightly bend the wire on the soldered end of the capacitor approximately 45 degrees. Once that is complete, you may now solder the remaining end of the capacitor to the other end of the red wire. Once complete, your phone line should now look like this. Take your 9 volt battery connector case and place a small amount of solder paste on the tip of the black wire. Using the wire cutters, clip the wire back on the resistor so that approximately half an inch is available on either side. Add a small amount of solder paste to the end of the resistor. For the purposes of this project, polarity is not an issue. Solder one end of the black wire to the end of the resistor with the solder paste. Apply a small amount of solder paste to the end of the resistor. Solder the end of the resistor to the left side of the capacitor where the red wire meets the tip of the wire of the capacitor. Once completed, your phone line should now look like this. In this final soldering step, take the red wire from the 9 volt battery connector. On the right side of the capacitor, place the red wire in between the red wire from the phone line and the wire coming from the capacitor. Add enough solder to completely enclose the connection. You can now enclose the project by applying electrical tape to any of the remaining exposed wires. Ensure that none of the wires are touching each other as you apply the electrical tape. Gently bend the wires together, making sure that none of the connections separate. Try to apply pressure only to the thicker parts of the wire, such as the wire connected to the capacitor. Take a generous amount of electrical tape and wrap it around the remaining wires. Try to press the project as flat as possible without damaging it. Attach the 9 volt battery connector case to the phone wire by wrapping a generous amount of electrical tape around the center. Your line voltage inducer is now complete. We can now move to the next step. From your desktop, open up your preferred web browser. From your preferred search engine, type in DreamPi. Click on Kazade's internet address. From the blog, scroll down until you find the latest release of DreamPi. Once you find the latest release, click it and download the file. Once the file has finished downloading, save it to your desktop. Return to your preferred search engine and type in Win32 Disk Imager. Locate the download button and download the file. When the file is finished downloading, save it to your desktop. Return to your preferred browser and type in Disk Juggler. Look for the latest release, version 6. Locate the download button and download the file.
Once the download is complete, save the file to your desktop. Return to your preferred search engine and type in PSO Patcher 2.0. Click on the Silverant website. Locate the latest release of PSO Patcher and click the download button. From here, choose the CDI image. Click it and save it to your desktop. Return to your desired search engine. Type in XDP Dreamcast Browser. Locate the download button and download the file. Once the download is complete, save the file to your desktop. Once the file is finished downloading, close your web browser. You should now have five files on your desktop. Completely install the program Win32 Disk Imager. Once the install is complete, locate the zip file for Disk Juggler. Open the zip file and drag the directory to your desktop. Open the directory and fully install the program. Once the program is fully installed, you can now close the folder. Stick the microSD card into the microSD to SD card converter and place the microSD card converter into your computer. Open your computer and locate the microSD card. Right click on the microSD card and completely format the drive. Once the drive has been formatted, you can now close the folder. Double click on Win32 Disk Imager to open the program. Open the DreamPy zip folder and drag the image file to your desktop. Now close any remaining open folders. Once the image file has been moved to your desktop, open the image file in Win32 Disk Imager. Write the image to your formatted micro SD card. Once the image has been written to the micro SD card, you can now close Win32 Disk Imager and eject the disk. You can now remove the micro SD card converter from your computer. Remove the micro SD card from the converter and place it back inside your Raspberry Pi. Now that DreamPi has properly been installed, Insert a blank CDR into your computer. Locate the zip file 
labeled XDP and open it. Drag the directory to your desktop and move the files. Open the folder and you'll see a number of RAR files. Right click on the first RAR file and extract all of the contents to the XDP directory. You will now see a folder labeled XDP Limited Edition. Open it and you will see the image file for XDP. Close the folder, double left click on the disk juggler icon and open the program. In the top left corner, click the new button. Select burn disk image. In the top left corner of the dialog box, select Source. Locate the XDP folder on your desktop and open the image file. Click on the Advanced tab. Under Mode, change Audio to Mode 2. In the far right corner, drag the slider under Faster to Slower. Once this is complete, you can now write your image to your CDR. Once the program is finished writing, you can now eject your CDR. Take it and label it XDP. Now that the XDP web browser has been burned to disk, close the internal dialog box and return to the main screen. Locate the PSO patcher zip file, open it, drag the contents to the desktop and close the folder. Open the PSO Patcher folder and make sure that the image file is located inside. If the image file is located inside, you can now close the folder and return to Disk Juggler. Insert a blank CDR. Select New, Burn to Image, select your source, return to the PSO Patcher folder, locate the image file and open it. Move to the Advanced tab and under Audio, select Mode 2. Change the write speed to slowest and select Write. Once the disk is finished burning, eject it and label it PSO 2.0. Now that the software and images have been created, we can move on to the next step. Connect your line voltage inducer to the back of your Dreamcast modem using the end without the battery pack attached. Insert a 9 volt battery into the battery pack. Connect the remaining end of the line voltage inducer into the line in of the USB fax modem. Connect the USB fax modem to any of the USB inputs on the Raspberry Pi. Now connect the active ethernet cable into your Raspberry Pi. Connect the micro USB power supply to the micro USB input on your Raspberry Pi. If the LEDs have turned on, your Raspberry Pi is now active. If you need to confirm that the DreamPi software is running properly, you can connect it via HDMI to a monitor to view its status. Once the DreamPi software has run through its processes, it will leave you with a login screen. At this point, you do not have to do anything further, simply dial out through your Dreamcast. Connect a standard Dreamcast controller with VMU unit to the controller input of your Dreamcast. Take the XDP CD that you have burned, open the Dreamcast, place the CD inside, close the lid, and press power.
Once XDP loads, scroll over to Custom Planet Web 2.6x. Follow the prompts. From the home screen, press Start. Scroll over to Options. Press A. Move your cursor to Internet Connection and press A. Once the internet connection has been opened, we can now edit the basic information. Where it reads, your real name, enter any name. Under ISP user login, enter your login handle. Under password, enter any password you might remember. Under dial-up number, leave the prefix blank and enter anything in the second dialog box. Backup number, leave blank. Enter the following DNS information. In the first box, 46. In the second box, 101. In the third box, 91. In the fourth box, 123. You can leave the second DNS section blank. Now click OK. Leave the section area code you are dialing from blank. Leave the section long distance phone prefix blank. Leave the section call waiting prefix blank. Leave the section outside dial prefix blank. Under modem init, enter AT and F0. Under dial, select tone. Under dial area code, select off. Under blind dial, select on. Now hit OK. Under Use Proxy, select No. Under Proxy Server Name, leave it blank. Under Proxy Port, leave it blank. Now hit OK. Once you have returned back to the Internet Options page, select Save. Your Dreamcast is now configured and ready to connect to the internet. To test this connection, scroll to the top of the screen and beside Google, click on the red phone. It may take a few minutes for your Dreamcast to connect to the internet. If the modem has connected properly to the internet, the red phone should now be green. Click on the Google logo to browse the internet. You may now use Google as you would on any standard web browser.
Now that your Dreamcast is properly configured and set up to use the internet, we can now connect to third-party servers to play games. Power down your Dreamcast and remove the XDP CD. Insert the PSO 2.0 CDR into your Dreamcast, close the lid and press power. Once the patcher has loaded, it will ask you to insert a GD-ROM. Have your copy of Fantasy Star Online versions 1 or 2 ready to insert. Do not power down your Dreamcast. Open the Dreamcast lid, remove the PSO patcher, and insert your copy of Fantasy Star Online. The patcher will now begin reading the Fantasy Star Online game disc. If the game disc is readable and suitable to play, the patches will have been loaded properly. Simply hit start to begin the game. Once the game begins, press start. You may continue or begin a new game. Allow the game to load from your VMU. Once the game is loaded, press A. Select Online Mode and press A. Select Yes. Now that your Dreamcast has been properly configured, select the first ISP. Select Yes. Select Yes. Your Dreamcast will now dial its modem. Using the line voltage inducer, it will connect to the USB fax modem connected to your Raspberry Pi. Using your DreamPi software, it will route this connection through your broadband network. You will now be able to connect to third-party servers and play Fantasy Star Online. For more resources, information, and updates, regularly check Kazade's internet address, the Dreamcast Junkyard, Dreampipe, and Dreamcast Now.